Okay, so we've got another side of our world, actually a lot of sides of, of our world, and that's what's great about Miami. Okay, um, mangoes, citrus. Guess what? I thought F Florida was all about citrus. Uh, oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits. First off, with the orange, we're going to take it and, and segment it because I'm going to use the insides for this dish to sort of balance out some of the, the flavors that, that we're going to have. So to segment it, you're just kind of cutting off the outside and the skin and the pith. And then cutting between the, the segments is what we're going to do with a little knife again, kind of using it over the bowl so you don't lose the juices uh, at this point. Okay, so we're just capturing segment after segment, just kind of going quickly around it. Okay, so just takes a little bit of patience. And just cutting between the, the filament so that it tastes all, all orange with that. Okay, the rest, just going to squeeze the juice into that. Clean this up. This dish is called an escaviche, uh, or escabiche. Put some pine nuts into this pan, get that hot, and we're going to toast that. Okay, toasting the, the pine nuts. So the other component of this, what I'm going to show you is what essential oil looks like. You see that puff on there? That's the essential oil coming out. I'm just showing you the, the burn on it. This is a very flabby orange here, but... The essential oil is that flavor. The idea of escovitch is it's generally a preservative method. So if you catch a big fish or catch a small fish or several of them with some sharp vegetables and vinegar, vinegar is the sharp preservative in, in an escovitch. You gotta season both sides. The exposure's there, the cooking is there. So you wanna season it with, with flavor. Preheating your pan before you cook, learn that. You wanna make sure you, you preheat the pan, it seasons the pan, it closes up the pores on it, and then it also causes your items to fit your fish or whatever you're cooking it to get a little bit more caramelization, a little bit more browning on it. Okay, so for our pan here, plenty hot. Okay, if it gets too hot, which also happens, wait a moment. Okay, let it, uh, let it rest for a few minutes, and what we're going to do is just wipe it out. So I'm just going to coat the pan. Okay, the pine nuts are toasting. They kind of now smell like peanuts. Oh, that's good. We're gonna add the swordfish that's seasoned in it. This you wanna cook on medium once you, you put it in. Put it in hot, turn the stove down a little bit to medium so that it cooks. So what I'm doing is rocking it just to make sure the oil, I don't have a lot of oil in here, but I have a little bit, so I just want to make sure it kind of distributes around the pan. A flat pan is important. Actually, this pan has a little bit of a indent on it, which is causing, that's why you see the burn in the middle, but not on, on the edge there. So we're going to let that cook. With that, what we're going to do is a combination of flavors here. I've got some garlic, some very thinly sliced garlic. Okay, so I'm going to be using that. Also some celery for crunch, some flavor for, like that. So the celery is gonna be really good. Hopefully we can get that one hot on this. Okay, and making sure it's not sticking, so I gave it a, a nice with fish, I think you can kind of see this, as fish starts to cook right in here, you start to see it turn from that opaqueness to a little bit of fleshy white that's starting to cook the, starting to cook the fish. So I'm gonna take it and again, working with the oil in the pan, making sure that we got the oil coverage there. Okay, just putting the oil down so it goes onto the pan and the fish, so we've got that. Now here we're going to take that and just turn this down a little bit so that it's going to cook a little slower 
on the stove top here. So you want that, that to cook at, at length. And that's still not going to happen there. So, as I suggest, I'm going to use a little bit of celery. On the celery, you're going to take it and cut it very fine, as I did with the, the garlic. So, just a real nice slim cut. This will add a little bit of depth of flavor, a little bit of crunch to it, uh, and some body to this overall dish. As I did with the, the garlic, the same thing. Just so you can see it, I've got some prepared, but I want you to see really very fine, fine, fine on the garlic. Okay, so just kind of slivered garlic. Make sure our fish is happy over there. Okay, so in this pan here, I'm just going to warm up our olive oil for a moment. Into that. I'm going to start off with our garlic and our celery, okay? Thin, thin sliced garlic, thin sliced celery. Get the rest of the celery in there. Give this a little salt and pepper. It makes a difference in cooking. It's actually not fanciful. There's a purpose for it, so you don't crush the vegetables or crush what you're doing in it, and you're mixing and stirring at the same time. That's kind of what the saute pan is designed for. With that, I'm going to just put a little bit more oil because this is a, a sort of the, the dressing of this is the combination. This is going to go down a little bit more, but it's a thick piece of fish. Usually a thick piece of fish like this, in general, into the oven, preheated oven. Preheated oven. Okay, probably about 350 for that. Leave it in there so it doesn't get uh, overcooked. So we're going to just let that come together. Into our mixture here, going to add some raisins. Okay, garlic, celery, raisins. Got some nice colors going on here as well. These are golden raisins. I've got some olives, some Spanish olives. That I sliced in half, a little bit of saltiness into it, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of flavors like that. Okay, then also going to add a little bit of capers into it. Capers are also nice, nice full flavor. So we got a lot of flavor going on in here in that dish. Kind of uh, very interesting. Okay, going to add a little bit of heat to it with some uh, crushed red pepper. Okay, then also let's add some fresh orange juice. Okay, so we got a little bit of orange juice there. I want this swordfish to taste a little orangey, so what I'm going to do here is add that orange juice right into the pan. Okay, you got to pick your shortcuts when you're cooking also. I mean, if you need to be using fresh squeezed orange juice because you're making a lot of it, that's okay. You see all this in the air? That's the essential oils that we're kind of pushing in there. Now I'm going to take this combination and get it in there. And so I'm making that escovitch with a little bit of vinegar, a little sherry wine vinegar in there. Just a little bit of salt. Okay, so here I'm going to take the mint. This is cooked enough, so I'm going to take that and kind of turn that off. Tearing the fresh mint leaves. You smelt what that was doing before. Here on, on top of this, wow. It really adds a, a major difference of sweetness, of aromatic, and I think uh, something that uh, you'll discover as you, you start. So I'm just tearing the leaves, tearing them kind of in half. Kind of leaving it very rustic like that. I'm going to put a couple of our toasted pine nuts to get that sweetness going on. 
and scoop some of that nice vegetable over to the side and then a little bit of our nice juices make sure you got that uh, going on kind of real lightly on that with this escovitch also which is wonderful this can be chilled down all together put into the refrigerator and kept for quite a while okay uh, if you're serving it cold like that, what I would do, I would not uh, serve the, the full chunk. What I would do then is just take this, okay, and just sort of slice it through. This time I would take our vegetables. like that you could also serve this this way hot as well but uh, I, you know with that I would take some fresh little mint leaves and probably one more And then just a little bit of our juices that are here. Okay, and that would be two different presentations for the same dish that works e either way uh, for us. So there you have it. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami-Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305-237-3276.